Well, there's a total of 12 of us. We call ourselves the, the Lance Bunch because it's um, a combination of my father's children and uh, my now mother's children. Valerie, Jacqueline, Rag, Lance. Some relatives of mine, uh, I was in the military and was about to transfer to El Paso, Texas, and they felt that they needed to put me with someone, and so they said uh, they arranged for us to meet the following day, and we met, uh, not really wanting to meet. Uh, but from there, uh, we began to talk, and well, that was September 17th of 86, I believe it was, and February of 87, we were married. We have three children, um, Danielle. Uh, who's married and uh, to an Air Force sergeant now, I believe, and they reside in Hawaii. Um, Philip Jr., who lives with us here in Georgetown, and Felicia Janae, who also lives with us. Growing up, it was a term that they pretty much use for some of us southern people and the dialect in which we spoke. And as I grew up and now look back and they talk about the Gullah language and whatnot, I think back to my grandparents and great-grandparents and their words echo in my brain and, okay, they were speaking Gullah. But Geechee, uh, a lot of folks associate that with rice. And so a lot of uh, Southerners, we eat rice. So. For me, it was family. Um, always trying to keep connected to family. Um, my father, uh, after my mother passed, he had five children that he was rearing. And he always made sure that we knew who our relatives were. He would uh, take us, you know, to visit relatives, um, no matter where they were almost, uh, from New York and Washington, D.C., and some locally here in Georgetown and South Carolina area. I would have to say my father and his work, work ethics and his, um, his faith, uh, always wanting to do the very best and give his very best, um, help us to try to emulate him. 
and his goal was always for his children to do better than he did. Elementary, I, I don't have too many memories of uh, elementary school because like I stated uh, earlier when I was saying that I was shy, that was really me. I was kind of um, a loner somewhat. I did not engage in much. I remember some of the May Day festivals that we used to have but not entail as what went on or anything of that nature. Um, high school, as I began to grow, uh, memories uh, once I was in high school is the vocational ed. I was in the carpentry program and remember uh, Reverend Irving as he was teaching us and at times we did some uh, carpentry work at the school um, and one particular uh, one stuck out to me is we were building a desk or a workstation for one of our guidance counselor and as we were finishing up we had to put the formica on top and using the glue, you're supposed to have the room open and so that you could have ventilation. Well, we were in the room and not really thinking much about it until after it was about over. And uh, how Reverend Irvin, after we got back to the class, he was talking to us kids and saying he knows now how people feel when they're intoxicated or whatnot because the fumes had kind of messed with his uh, mind a little bit. So that was a, a particular memory from high school. Went to high school at Choppy High. Graduated in 1976. That and it gave me my uh, uh, start because we also had a, um, an art class and a shop, uh, Mr. Davis did the shop uh, class and we would make little shelves or whatnot. But then after being in the military, uh, stationed in Germany, my last tour in Germany, and they had a wood shop there and I wanted to build a cabinet for our bedroom. And so I started going to the shop and talking with the guy that ran the shop. And he began to show me some different things. And so I purchased some wood and started uh, on the cabinet, but then was not able to finish because I was deployed. But then after I came back home and we moved, I finished the cabinet up in Maryland. And then from there started doing small things and as I came home after I retired from the Army, got home and was unemployed and bought me some equipment. And from there I just started doing small things, buying woodworking magazines and taking the patterns and making uh, things from the, from the patterns that were in the booklet. And then uh, from there I just got, uh, I would say, inspiration. Every now and then I would get something in my mind and not having the ability to really draw it out from my mind I would go on the computer and begin to look at clip arts or different things and then uh, downloading them and turning them into patterns pretty much and from there would make these uh, options, uh, items and give them away to family members or friends as gifts and after I continue to do this, people began to see my work and desire to have, so I went on and from there <clears throat> got my business license so that if I'm selling that I would be in line with the laws and, and so we started that and that was back in 2003 when we actually uh, got our business license. most proud of was a gift that I gave to my uh, sole surviving uncle on my father's side this past um, 
Fourth of July, we celebrated our family reunion you know, on the land side. And I had this thing in mind to give him a gift. And so I started working on it and I wanted to do like a family tree, something that he would be able to remember and that others would be able to look back on. And I found this tree online. And so I took the tree and then I continued searching and found also a pattern of a root. And so I combined the two to make a tree and its root and then began trying to figure out how could I make it even better. So I implanted my grandfather and grandmother's name in the root of the tree and made it into a pattern, I blew it up about 30% and then placed it on a piece of wood and began to cut that out. And once we were through with the tree, I had all of my aunts and uncles and my father and took their names and all of their children and put each name on the tree. Uh, not on the tree, but on a board that I placed a tree on. And at the top it just says uh, Lance Family. And at the bottom there was a, an inscription that I got off the internet also that says um, that we all, we family, we're like branches of a tree. We all grow in different directions, but our roots keep us together. And we completed that and framed it and everything and presented it to my uncle. And that was, I think, one of the uh, prize that I created myself. And from that now, um, all of my uncle's children would like for me to do one for them and uh, my sister and a few other family members also. And uh, so we're looking at doing that for them and also possibly for my wife's side of the family. Yeah, well, my father is pretty much a main because he, he brought us up. But then I would have to also look at my grandmother because um, my mother passed away at an early age. I was uh, seven when she passed and she was only 27. So when my father had to travel or to, uh, had to go to work or something, we would always go and stay with grandmom and granddad. And grandmom would always be there for us, taking care of us um, even after we had grown up. Uh, every, all the other grandchildren called the grandmom but with me and my sibling, we just called her mama because that's the way we were brought up. We were always there and so with our aunts and uncle that were still at the house, um, they called her mom, so we were calling her mama also and that's what she became to us. She became mama. And so every time we came home to visit, we always would go by to see mama. And um, just her strength, she was a small lady, but she, uh, she, had, she, she was a faithful woman also and, and very strong in who she was and would do anything that she could to help us or to help anyone that uh, she came in contact with. Well, at home, I remember um, my dad, he had a little garden out back and we would plant potatoes and whatnot. And so that, that after the season was over, we had to do uh, the potato bed where we put the potato in and the straw, the, the pine straw and then cover it up. And how at times, you know, when it's time to go out and to bring some in for the house, you had to dig a little hole and, and pull those in. Uh, Remember my grandfather, he um, had the smokehouse out back of his house that they would cure the meats and, and that's where everything would kept. And you can just walk by and smell the aroma of the various um, uh, meats that they had. Uh, and I 
can't really remember grandma making any preserve, but I'm pretty sure she did because we did have some around the tables with that biscuit then uh, for breakfast and, and sometimes even dinner. Sweet potatoes, yes. Oh yes, his uh, banana pudding. Yes, he made it from scratch. And I have not found anyone that was able to make it like him. One that I've never been able to figure out. Um, eh, folks used to talk about something called a plant eye. And I was never able to figure that out. They said that this thing was supposed to change into uh, different forms, um, but uh, never experienced it. But as a child, it did um, cause some fright. Yeah, yeah. As you're walking home at night and you're kind of thinking about those things that people have placed in your head. Well, the, the Gullah folks from my recollection are spiritual people. And most of what I do is, uh, I guess it has a spiritual connection uh, in the naming of my business, Inspirations in Wood. Uh, so I try to create something that would either, either uh, inspire someone or uh, just brighten up their day um, and it's something that they can look back on over time and, and remember that there's something that was handmade by someone that was close to me or that someone that possibly came from the same background as I did. Well, that plays a major role um, because as we look back on the history of our people and our culture, they uh, had a lot of faith. Um, that's what kind of kept them going. Uh, they used their music to uh, send messages or to um, spread messages. Uh, they kept the faith by sticking to, trying, to, trying their very best to stick together and always holding on to our family and the belief that family is a, a key to survival. Um, and trusting that a God that they believed in would one day deliver them uh, through all the situations that they were going through. And even today, you know, we, we still hold on to those beliefs and understanding that a lot of things have changed because of our uh, faith and our connection with the God that we serve. Well, um, over time, it seems that we are now accepting it more because there was a time where we, when, when someone would call us a uh, Geechee or something like that, we would be offended or, or, or take offense to what is being said. But now I believe that we are, are now trying to delve more into our culture to um, find out who we are uh, because uh, for a while we did not want to be associated with it. Um, but now I think that we are more, it's more acceptable now and we are uh, trying to, trying to go a little bit further back and, and deeper into that culture of Gullah Geechee. support system, I would say, uh, family, and just passing down what we know to the next generation to um, try to make it stronger. Uh, and, and just, uh, I would say, just teaching 
teaching the next generation about the past uh, so that they would be able to carry it into the future and, and maybe even being able to do more for our culture. Coming up, no, but then I, I learned later that um, uh, Georgetown was one of the major producers of rice back in the time. Uh, that's where most of the money came from and that our people were the ones that were cultivating and, and planting and caring for the product. Uh, and also, I believe we uh, set up the dikes and whatnot, the systems uh, that help to cultivate and make that uh, product grow. Somewhat custom because uh, people will come to me, they'll see something or they get something in their mind and ask if I would be able to. And so I would take their ideas and begin to work on something and produce. And then uh, every year at Christmas time, uh, buy uh, magazines that have Christmas ornaments and whatnot. And so for the past, I have to say about six, it has to be more than six years, I would make um, ornaments and give them to uh, my co-workers as gifts uh, and so I was looking at doing my, my wife was telling me you need to stop making those and selling them uh, so I said we'll we'll yes and so we'll start doing that but I do like individual name because uh, my co-workers on their birthdays I did like their name in different styles or whatnot and presented those to them or to individuals that were leaving the uh, office or whatnot that I made gifts for. And, it, and that's what I believe, it's a gift because I never really had any serious training in it. I mean, because a lot of folks will ask me, where did I learn? And it was just something I started doing um, from a little bit of training that I got in high school. <laughs>